The Clark's Desert Boot, for me, has been a go-to staple in my wardrobe and it's been one of the most versatile pieces of footwear that I've had for quite a long time. It doesn't look too crazy, it's understated, but it's very sophisticated and it just fits into a lot of situations. You can wear it with jeans, you can wear it with chinos, you can wear it with a blazer and odd trousers, probably khakis will look best with it. And you could also, contrary to popular belief, you can wear it with shorts. I've done it and I think it looks great. While they do look great, they do not come without compromises. For a long time, these listed at $130 US. The price just bumped up to $150. Not a terribly bad price increase for what you're getting. They do last a really long time. These I've had for over two years. They're pretty much donezo. Pretty much when uh, when I walk, it feels like I'm walking almost barefoot. The, the sole is pretty much worn away. But I definitely feel like I got my money's worth out of them. After you wear them in, there's really, I mean, if you guys can see, you could probably stuff these in your back pocket if you really need to because there there's just nothing to them I mean, look at that that's probably the, the size of the camera that i'm using to film this that never really bothered me a lot of times but there were a couple of times where my arch would start to hurt in these and also people say that they're not the greatest in the rain i've never had much of a problem in the rain with these shoes that's because i am always careful and i don't walk on slick metal surfaces in the rain yeah they're not really the greatest this sole is not good in the rain it soaks up water like a sponge you're pretty much might as well just be wearing a pair of flip-flops because everything is just getting wet. Now, in the summertime when I'm wearing these primarily, I don't mind if my feet get wet. It doesn't bother me overly so. But in the fall and winter, these aren't really the greatest option unless you know it's not going to rain or snow. So now the other thing about these two is this crepe sole starts to turn a dark color. I kind of don't mind that. I wish it wouldn't turn so dark. The saving grace is you do have this tan line around it. I really do like that or it's a cream colored line that does give it its nice casual look but you can only take this one so far this color that is i actually really enjoy these this is the tan colorway i don't know if they still make these they're constantly canceling and adding new colors uh, you can see these are a little bit better There's a lot more cushioning left in there it's, maybe there's more support there's no shank in these boots not worn as much and these are going to dress up a lot easier than something like this but after about a year of wearing these you're still going to run into the same issues if you don't like the lack of arch support or just feeling like you're wearing a glorified slipper all day. So one day I was going to pull the trigger and buy another pair of these just because they've worked out so well. 90% of the time, they're perfectly fine for me and my needs. I was going to go ahead and buy these, but then I saw the Desert Boot 2.0. I thought this was pretty cool. They made some nice changes, nice additions. I think they're welcoming. So we're going to talk about the Desert Boot 2.0, what you're getting, and primarily the differences between the first generation Desert Boot and the Desert Boot 2.0. Alright, so if we take a look at the inside of the Desert Boot, inside is not leather lined at all. You guys see that? That makes for a very flimsy, easy to break in shoe. They pretty much break in within a week of wearing them, so that's great, but that also means that the shoe feels kind of floppy and flimsy, and if you run really fast, you may trip over them. And it's really hard to get a good secure feeling from these shoes. Again, it just feels like they're they're nice and free feeling, but you're pretty much better off if we're almost like wearing a pair of flip-flops because if you gotta run and move fast, these shoes are gonna be flopping all over the place on you. So the Desert Boot 2.0 actually has a little bit more structure to it, and primarily it has is leather lined. So that's a really nice touch that they added. That really does give it a much more luxurious feel, specifically when you're putting the shoe on and taking it off. And that's something a lot of people are probably going to be pretty happy about. All right, the next thing is there is no removable insole in this shoe. It's just what you see is what you get. It's, you get this super soft crepe rubber outsole. There is no arch support at all. There's, I mean, maybe if you buy them in a bigger size, you can drop your insole in. But for the most part, there's no removable insole. What you see is what you get. They're pretty comfortable, but some people have reported they don't like the lack of support and the lack of comfort in these shoes. The Desert Boot 2.0 actually has a removable insole. Now, there's not much in ways of art support. It's pretty much just an extra layer of cushioning. So for someone like me, this is not really gonna be a deal breaker, but what this does, it, it will allow you to buy this boot, this Desert Boot 2.0, the second generation, and drop your own insole in there from Dr. Scholl's or if you have a custom orthotic, and now you could have that classic Desert Boot look and feel, such as these, but with running sneaker comfort and support. So that's a really great modification that they made to this boot. So this boot is also a little bit stiffer in a good way. It doesn't feel like it's gonna fall off if you're sprinting. It doesn't feel like it's just 
there along for the ride. You do get a more secure feeling when wearing this shoe. It's nice and stiff to the point where it feels like your foot's not doing all the work. It actually is going to help your foot and aid your foot when you're going to go for long walks or spend a long time on your feet. The outsole in these boots does seem like it's going to have a lot more grip, specifically on those wet metal surfaces we were talking about a few minutes ago and in the rain. These are not waterproof. I don't expect them to be waterproof. I would feel a lot more confident wearing these in the rain or even snow because I know that this grip is going to be a lot better than these. These are like a sheet of ice almost. Like I said, I avoid slippery surfaces in the rain or slippery surfaces altogether with these. This feels like this is something I'm not gonna have to worry about. You always wanna be careful when you're walking around slippery surfaces or in the rain, but it does feel like this is not going to suck up the moisture in the water like a sponge, and it's gonna keep your feet dry for maybe a couple of minutes longer. And finally, these are the stock laces that come with the boot. Now, I actually prefer a lighter color lace that kind of matches the bottom. I just think it makes the boot look overall better. Regardless, these laces do feel a lot more premium than the native laces in the original Desert Boot. Now, is that a big deal? To me, it's not because whenever I get a new pair of Clark's Desert Boots, I go straight to Amazon and I just replace the laces right away. I'd rather spend the 10 or $15 to replace them with a good pair of laces versus a year into it, my laces snap, which if you read on the internet, a lot of people say that the laces are the first thing to go with these boots. A lot of times it'll happen when you're out and about and then all of a sudden you foot, your shoe feels super loose and you look down and you gotta tie the laces together. I'd rather just work in a preventative maintenance type of way and prevent the problem from happening first than letting it happen and trying to band-aid the issue. Not really a deal breaker, but something to mention. So those are all the good things about the new Desert Boot 2.0. Now we're gonna talk about the not so good things. Number one, and really if you think about it, the negative things about the Desert Boot 2.0 are also the positive things about the Desert Boot 2.0. So we talked about the leather lining, how it's nice and luxurious. Well, the downside to that leather lining is your feet are gonna run considerably hotter, especially in the summertime in this boot than in the original Chukka boot because you got an extra layer of leather to trap that heat and moisture in there. That is something to be considered for fall and winter or early spring. These probably you wouldn't know the difference, but if you're expecting to wear these in the summertime to your office job or you just wanna dress casually and you're looking for a good casual shoe, just be prepared. If your feet sweat a lot, these probably aren't gonna help you that much. So now, and this is to me, but I am a size 11 in the desert boots. I know this is a new shoe, it has more material, so I tried a size 11 and a half and 11. The 11 and a half was too big. My foot had like an inch and a half of length up front. It was swimming around in there. So the 11 feels pretty good, but I do get a squeaking when my foot actually, when I walk, I do get a squeaking right here. And it's the weirdest thing, but it does bother me. I've worn these all day before, and I thought the squeaking would go away. The squeaking just never went away, and it is just because it's a more structured shoe, so it doesn't have as much give as the original one. It's gonna be fighting your foot more, not just moving with it, such as the original one did. And so with all that stiffness, they're still only giving you two eyelets. Now, two eyelets work with a flimsy shoe like this, but with a shoe that's a lot stiffer, three eyelets would have really allowed you to pull the ankle closure around nice and tight while still having plenty of room for your forefoot here because it seems like you're only tightening up here but you can still get a little bit of heel slip. Imagine if you had a shoe where you can only tighten the toe but you're still getting a flip-flop effect. It's kind of reverse. You want it to be tighter around here and looser here to allow for swelling so your foot doesn't move and actually rub in the leather like it's happening to me. That's just something to take into consideration. Maybe it's just because they're not broken in yet but that's my experience with these. Talking about being broken in these are going to be harder to break in. Obviously, they're going to be harder to break in than something that has a lot less support and material and is just more cheaply made. I've had these for about a week. I wore them for a few, I wore them a couple times, maybe two or three times. They didn't really cause any discomfort of my feet. I still thought about the shoe all day. I still realized these shoes aren't broken in yet. They're a bit stiff. I'm getting a little bit of a heel slip. I'm getting that squeak every single time. I feel it and I, it's going to give me a blister. They do take a little while to break in. But like anything similar to a pair of Red Wings or a pair of dress shoes, quality items may take a little bit longer to break in. The trade-off is they're going to last a lot longer and be a lot more comfortable and a lot better for the health of your feet. Now that we went over the pros and cons of this boot, I'm going to talk about my overall thoughts and my conclusion about this Desert Boot 2.0. I do like the idea of this boot. It takes the classic look of the Desert Boot first generation and tries to bring you better arch support better grip in the rain or wet weather, a more luxurious feel, and a more structured type of boot 
That way you can wear it in more situations where you're gonna be on your feet a lot more. My experience with the desert boots has always been, they're good, but walking around, if I was on a vacation and I was walking like five or 10 miles every single day, I would bring this shoe, but I'd probably bring a pair of Adidas Ultra Boost or a pair of running sneakers as a just in case. Since they have made this with more arch support, right off the bat, I would trust this shoe for walking all day just because it adds a little bit more structure and support. And you could also drop that custom insole with extra arch support in there. And it means that you're gonna be able to walk in this shoe all day without any discomfort, without feeling like your arches are gonna be sore or anything like that. Pretty much, I like the idea of this boot. Now, I was going to send them back after just wearing them around the house, but I think I'm gonna give them a little bit more of a chance than that, just because I don't think that they're broken in yet, and I'd hate to just return them and then just go back to these. That's actually what happened. I wore these the next day, and they're comfortable, but the entire time I was thinking, these pretty much, they're so flimsy, they're comfortable, but not the best thing to wear something as flimsy as this every single day. It's like wearing a pair of Vans old schools, the classic ones every single day. At some point, you need to take care of your feet and wear something that's gonna give it a little bit more support just to give you a foot of rest. That's pretty much why I decided I am gonna keep these and try to break them in and just see where it goes. All right, so that's the Desert Boot 2.0, second generation Desert Boot. I think it's a pretty cool shoe. I like the idea of it. It seems like it's more well-made. It's gonna be more versatile as far as comfort and usability. And it's great that they took the style of the old boot and actually made it into a better product that's going to fit into the masses more, which love leather lining, better support, better traction, better in the wet weather, more seasonality. I think it's a great idea, and I hope it works out. I'm going to leave it right there, guys. As always, thanks so much for stopping by. If you like what you see, consider subscribing. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks so much for watching. I do appreciate every one of you, and I will talk to you next one. Bye!